How do we do it at, at BMC? Well, the, uh, the foundation of how we do it is, is if you look at the bottom, it starts with resources. You have resources in your environment. You may have a private cloud, physical, virtual, storage, of applications, you have databases. And then you've got you know, financial and business metrics. These are one of the, kind of the key differentiators um, that we bring to the table in our capacity optimization solution. You also have, on top of all these this infrastructure resources, you, know, you have um, other applications. You have, uh, you have NetApp. You, know, you might have NetApp storage. Uh, storage. You might have uh, HP OpenView. You might have you know, IBM Tivoli Monitoring. And our solution connects to those existing data sources. So we have what's called uh, data connectors. Our solution reaches out, leverages the data, collects the data that you already have, and brings that into our capacity management database. Now, one of the key differentiators from a uh, data collection perspective is that we also have that process level data. Off to the right at the bottom, you see physical and virtual servers, process level data collection. That is key for uh, the advanced capacity planner who wants uh, metrics from a process level perspective collected from their individual servers, or it could be you know, someone that's new to capacity management that says, you know, I've got mission critical servers, and the data that I'm getting from uh, Tivoli or that I have uh, from uh, a, uh, a, a Tivoli tool, um, IBM tools, it's not granular enough. I need more. So you can, they can run our collectors to collect very granular 10 second interval data from these servers and do, do what? Do analysis, forecasting, planning. If I build here, you'll see the many different, uh, many different stakeholders now. As I mentioned earlier, capacity in the past was a process that was you know, by capacity planners for capacity planners. Uh, and maybe they would you know, have a yearly report they would send to customers um, or to their IT management. And it would say, you know, server one, two, three is you know, underutilized. But to the business, that's meaningless. So what we see now is that different stakeholders in very different roles want to understand you know, the capacity. If, if you're a cloud architect, for example, you want to do a cloud plan. If you're a, a financial manager, maybe you want a chargeback report. So therefore, you need that you know, business data and financial data, so the ability to connect to existing data sources, like your performance metrics, plus the ability to bring in financial data, uh, you know, dollars and cents, and or business data, such as business drivers as orders per minute, trades per second, that allows us to correlate that performance data with the business or financial data and provide a, a chargeback report, let's say, to a financial analyst. And then there's you know, service managers that want a high-level dashboard. You know, your VPs or, or, or CEOs say, I just want red, green, uh, and yellow. I want to know, you know, I don't want to know the details, just give me a high-level dashboard. But well, we can provide those as well. Uh, on you know, a summarized basis, on a scheduled basis, and also provide out-of-the-box exception reports. And that's one of the other keys. Tell me what's wrong, not what's running well. Okay? And we can do that automatically. Now, capacity management, not a process um, in and of itself. It, it's not an island uh, in and of itself. It integrates with other solutions, and other solutions make capacity management better. So we have out-of-the-box um, integration with uh, many of our BMC solutions, uh, discovery and dependency mapping, otherwise known as ADDM. Uh, our HMC MDB, we have integration there to provide uh, service definitions. So those service definitions can be brought into uh, capacity optimization. So you can do service aware uh, capacity uh, plans, analysis, and reports based on services that are, um, that are uh, defined in your CMDB. Performance management, just as we have um, you know, connectors to, let's say, Tivoli monitoring, we have an out-of-the-box connector to our own uh, performance management tool called BMC Proactive Net Performance Management. So you can leverage that performance data to do capacity analysis and, uh, and reporting. And lastly, uh, BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management, uh, capacity management, Oh, so important in a cloud, more so in a cloud environment, uh, because of the speed uh, at which uh, at which resources 
uh, are brought to bear, the size of clouds, and since uh, SLAs are also important, we have integration with our cloud lifecycle management. I'll talk about that a little bit more um, at the end. So what type of capacity management do you want to deliver? We find, and I will uh, I'll build this slide, do the whole thing. Uh, if you're new to capacity management, we find that um, customers start at infrastructure. And our capacity optimization tool will enable you to, you know, look at just your infrastructure. Start by understanding, you know, what's in your environment, what's underutilized, what's overutilized, you know, how many servers do you have? You can work in conjunction with ADDM or any other discovery tool that you may have. That's with the, uh, the flexibility of our data connectors to bring in, uh, you know, data inventory and, um, and then uh, attach to data, source, data sources. You can understand from an infrastructure pr perspective the, the servers, the storage, the network devices that are running in your environment. The next level uh, of, of maturity provides more value is at the service level. You know, looking at your infrastructure and understanding infrastructure utilization is important, but let's tie it into a business service and map your infrastructure components to business services. So BCO has the ability to do analysis and reports um, and even planning, forecasting on a, a business service, accounts payable, um, for example, or individual applications. Lastly, business aware is simply aligning all that, aligning the infrastructure with the applications, the business services, and saying, of that business service, how many transactions can that business service uh, support per day, per week? Oh, and guess what? When we're going into the holiday season and I'm a retailer and I, um, I'm going to do 40% or more of my revenue in the last three months of the year, how much capacity do I need? Everybody can remember, uh, well, I say most, um, it seems to be uh, on the news um, for a couple of days straight, um, poor Target, love Target, I shop there. I remember a number of months ago, um, they, um, they got together with an Italian designer, and they launched an Italian, this woman's uh, the designer's clothing line, and they put it online, and I, I don't, I will say I don't have uh, intimate knowledge of this, but it sure looked like a capacity problem to me where they didn't anticipate how many customers would hit their website to buy the Italian designer's clothing, uh, and they brought the website down. Now, you know, not the best launch, uh, you know, marketing launch for, for Target. Um, they lost revenue, uh, hurt their customer loyalty. I'm sure their IT department wasn't happy as well. You know, that's a, a good example of where capacity management, you know, could have helped them. They could have run a model that said, if we have, you know, 2 million people hitting our website in, uh, in a 24-hour period, do we have the infrastructure, you know, to support that? Or do we have to outsource to a public cloud, you know, to, to, uh, to augment our IT resources? Perfect, uh, perfect example of where capacity management helps. And looking at it from a business perspective, uh, answer, answers a lot of key questions. So if we drill down just a little bit more into um, uh, into the, the different um, capabilities or activities in capacity management analysis uh, of your system and service performance uh, is key and is usually um, the starting point. Customers want to see, you know, before you know how you get to, uh, how, you know, you want to you get to a, um, a destination. You know, folks want to have uh, a more optimized, um, efficient data center. But before you can get there, you got to know where you are. You have to know what you have, what's underutilized, what's overutilized, uh, you know, and, and get that starting point, that baseline. And that's what the analysis is. It's a baseline. Understanding through, you know, multi-system views, through workload views, looking at application resources over time. Capacity is a historical process that looks at historical data to predict the future. So with that historical data, you can drive analysis, forecasting, planning, and so forth. Heat maps are another way um, that BCO provides a very high-level view of, you know, the hot spots and the white space uh, in your data center. Uh, and so through these, uh, you know, multi-metric views, workload views, and heat maps, have a, a host of other views as well, 
the two key words when you're looking to do analysis uh, out of the box. You know, every customer that um, that uses BCO, uh, to, you know, to some degree has questions such as, you know, show me best practices. If you're brand new to capacity management, you want a solution that you know provides you with guidance, and we provide a lot of out of the box views that guide you, that show you here are the you know, the CPU KPIs that you should be looking at. Yes, you can collect, you know, 67 different CPU metrics, but these are the five that are, you know, the most important. And so out of the box is important. Automation is important as well. As your, as your uh, infrastructure grows, uh, your ability to run things manually decreases, and you want to see the, you know, analyses, you know, automatically uh, um, generated. These analyses can also be captured and put into reports, um, like the ones I showed you in the previous slide, and they can be sent to your stakeholders on a you know, daily, weekly, monthly, or other scheduled basis. If you look at time forecasting, here's where you start to see how business-aware capacity management comes into play. Um, we can, using that uh, analyzed data, we can then forecast out in time when are you going to hit a guideline or a threshold, uh, and give me the window. Capacity, our capacity management tool, BCO, is very good at saying, you have a two-month window before you're going to saturate. And here's where it works hand in glove with performance management. Performance management tools might give you, you know, that, you know, two-day, three-day, three-hour view of when you're going to hit, you know, a guideline or threshold. But capacity, because of its historical view and its forecasting ability, can give you a two-month window, saying you're going to run out of memory in two months if you don't do something about it. It gives you enough time, enough runway where you can actually do something. In the bottom right-hand corner, you see, you'll see a, a nice chart that is a great example of how we can bring in business metrics and correlate those with utilization. So you can see how utilization of a particular you know, system or it could be a business service or application is driven by the number of orders per minute. And so you can see, you know, how many orders can I do? Can I support today? And then you can do a forecast out. To see, can I support 15,000, you know, orders per day? Uh, anticipating that going to be uh, the, um, you know, the level of business activity I'm going to hit because I'm launching a great new, you know, product for the holiday season. So this type of, you know, prediction of your system service behavior is key to you know, aligning your future capacity and aligning it to the number of transactions that you anticipate. And then lastly, um, planning and optimization. Virtualization planning, cloud planning, that is you know, the bread and butter of capacity management. Understanding you know, what, you can, um, what you can consolidate so that physical to virtual, physical to cloud, um, you know, where should these applications reside, uh, which applications should coexist, which applications shouldn't coexist. Those are the type of what-if analysis that can be done with capacity optimization. And you can add in different um, policies, different constraints that, you know, that guide the, um, the algorithms and the recommendations that BCO will provide. Uh, you can set policies that say, you know, using business, technical, and compliance constraints, you might have disaster recovery systems that can't live with, you know, other applications. You can create that kind of policy. You're, you're not going to consolidate, you know, workloads from your Vienna data center with those in, um, in uh, you know, North Carolina uh, or, you know, New York and Austin. You know, you're not going to bring those, you don't want to bring those uh, servers um, together from different locations. Or you don't want to consolidate, you know, five Oracle instances uh, on the same uh, vSphere. Those type of policies can be implemented so you get an optimum um, policy or optimum uh, consolidation or virtualization plan. And we also provide in the tool a what's called virtual uh, virtualization readiness. You know, is that application ready? Is it you know since not everything can uh, migrate or should be migrated to a virtual or uh, cloud environment? It tells you, you know, is this application um, one that would you know, play well in a virtual environment, or is it CPU or I/O intensive? 